Hi everyone. Today we're going to be making a necklace using this key, which is a component from the Lost in Wonderland mystery kit. This is going to be a really fun project and really simple to put together. You won't need any extra materials if you did grab that kit from silversilkonline.com. Everything is included in there, including the wire. But I will be going over the materials list uh, here in a little bit that in case you do want to make this design and you don't have the kit, then you can still uh, try and copy this same technique. If you're new to my channel, my name is Neelay Patel. I'm the owner, designer, and educator here at Silver Silk and More, bringing you guys fun, inspirational projects. So uh, you can catch me in a couple different places. First is, of course, my YouTube channel. While you're there, please subscribe, and you can also find a large library of all sorts of Silver Silk tutorials. Secondly is my Instagram which uh, you can find all sorts of project pictures and reels and little short clips, uh, video clips that you might be inspired by. So I recommend following both of those channels and um, just keeping up with Silver Silk. So I'm gonna actually flip over to the project photo and then I'm going to flip over to my work board and we are just gonna get started right into it. So I mentioned the key, so there are that little beauty is um, this is an antique key that is gold plated and I just thought this was a really great component from um, the Alice in Wonderland books and I think that it's a very inspiring component especially for a necklace design so I'm gonna have that out and handy um, and that is again included in this kit while you are um, ooing and awing over that, I'm going to actually go over to the silver silk that's actually included in the kit too. This is a special made pearlesque chain that is a gorgeous, rich purple. And um, it has a gold ball chain that has bright pink tinsel that's knitted over it. And then an additional layer of wire that's been knitted over it. So it's a very multi-layered chain. And these different color combinations really add to the unique factor of what makes pearlesque chain super magical and um, super, I don't know, just a rich material to use. So you get three foot of this um, to work with and we're gonna work with all of it at once, but you can kind of see and adjust to whatever the necklace length that you want and the end you can cut down as much silver silk as you want to. Um, and that's part of the finishing stage. So I'm not gonna worry too much about cutting it right now. Let's see, I've got a clasp on hand, just a standard lobster claw. I've got a couple of my double, excuse me, my single strand end caps. Now these are really cool. They have little teeth on the inside so that you don't need any glue or any additional special tools other than whatever you have in your toolkit. Um, and the idea here is that you insert the chain on this little, into this little channel and you just crimp it down with the pliers and that's really about it. There's nothing else to it. The little teeth grasp onto the ball chain and it makes it super easy, durable, lots of strength because the end cap itself has a brass core and then plating over it. So you get a nice polished finish, but you also get that strength because it is a brass material. Okay, you will need three feet of um, 22 gauge craft wire in gold color. You can see that we're doing a very gold theme here. <laughs> and of course you're gonna need some beads. So I have all sorts of beads here and some ready-made components. And so um, some of these beads are included, well, actually all these beads are included in the kit as well. But I've just got some drops and some resin um, or actually lucite flower uh, petals here. And while I have most of these components built, I'm actually going to show you how to build one or two of them. And then it's basically just a repeat process after that. So um, I have a couple of these larger 10 millimeter rondelle beads, a couple of these, uh, I think they're either six or eight millimeter rondelle um, opaque red beads. And then I've got three drops. These are roughly about 15 millimeters or so and um they're just a gorgeous purple color metallic purple and then i've got some of these beautiful uh these are matte rose colored and also have this nice little vitriol 
sort of finish to them. As you can see, they're just a beautiful dusty pink color. And those are six millimeters and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those. So these components are created all the same. So I'm gonna set those to the side and I've got one out here that I can show you. Here's a close up of that leaf, by the way. Really cool little acrylic component there. And that's got that hole at the top that we're gonna use to connect everything. So I'm gonna show you how to do a simple loop, which is basically how you would create this chain. And we're gonna attach it to the chain. So I'm gonna grab my wire and I'm just gonna use a snippet of this because I normally would work off the full spool, but I think because it's a video recording, <laughs> um, it's just easier to work in smaller little segments here. And you're gonna need your um, little round nose pliers here. So what I do, because I'm using 22 gauge, which is a thinner wire, I typically like to work with making smaller simple loops for that because the smaller the loop, the more strength it's going to have. The larger the loop, you can sort of um, imagine it would get a little bit weaker just because you have more area um, that that circle is creating. And so it's going to get a little bit more flimsy. Um, in which case, I would then switch from doing a simple loop to a wire wrapped loop, which we will do in this project. So I'm going to cover both techniques. But I've just lined my wire up to my round nose pliers there at the very flush tip there. And I'm going into my pliers about a couple, maybe about two to three millimeters into my pliers there. And I'm just going to rotate counterclockwise until, and I'm going to lift up every now and then and just continue to kind of fold this in until I get this nice little round shape. Once that happens, you can grab your chain nose pliers and you just grasp it right above where that intersecting tip is of that wire right on the stem. And then you just fold it back clockwise so that it evens out your loop there and it's more centered now. That looks really good to me. So basically then you just slide down your bead and then you can use your cutters, your wire cutters, to clip off about a half inch is what I like to start with. The more wire you have, that's actually better because you can always cut away, but you cannot add on to. But what I'm gonna do now is go to the same area of my pliers as I was before repositioning everything. And then I'm just going to continue to fold that again and usually that half inch is that magic number for me at least um, to get that to look perfect. So now I can grasp it with my chain nose pliers and just push back. So right now I have a chain that has um, kind of opposing loops here. I've got one that faces out toward me and then one that's flat against my finger there. And I think for this project, I'm actually going to make sure that both my loops are even here. So I'm just gonna grab the two pliers I have on hand here. And I'm just going to press those loops to become flat as such. Once I've done that, I'm ready to open up by just pressing up or down in that, um, in that end of that loop there. And you can slide in your chain once you've created multiple links here and you simply just press back and make sure that that seam is nice and closed for that simple loop. Looks like it's just a tad bit open now that I'm looking at it again. So I'm just gonna press down more. And then once you get several of those connected, you've got this beautiful, easy little chain here. And that's gonna be our drop for our necklace essentially. So we need to figure out a way to connect our key to this. I could connect it with that little simple loop there. I just think that this little width here is gonna be a little bit too much for that smaller loop. So we'll need to create essentially a little bit of a bigger loop, but we're also going to have to wire wrap that top part of that loop because just for that extra bit of security so that if the loop is flimsy, at least it has a way to um, catch itself and not unravel <laughs> or drop your key um, as you're wearing it. So to do this, I'm actually gonna use these bigger 
uh, Rondell beads here. And this is gonna be basically my format. Let me move this up on camera here of my design, just like that. So let's do it. What I'm gonna do, normally if I were making a simple loop, I'd have my plier there at the tip. But in the case of a wire wrap loop, I'm actually going to give myself a little bit of extra slack to be able to coil it around. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. So I'm actually gonna go down about an inch and a half into my wire. And I also have to account for the fact that this has a wider width for that component to attach to at the top part of that key, this part right here. So I need my loop to be fairly bigger. So I'm gonna slide down into my pliers, maybe about just past the halfway point. The further you go down, the bigger your, your loop is gonna be. So that looks pretty good to me. And I'm just gonna work my tail end of my wire around the mandrel of my pliers. So now I've got basically these intersecting lines here, that one and that one, and I've got a loop off to one side there. So I can actually remove it from my pliers and I could do a little bit of work here. Just like before, I'm gonna grab right where the stem touches the little tail wire, just inside of that loop. And I'm going to then push back um, clockwise so that my loop is now centered. But you'll see that my wire here has shifted. Um, it went from a 90 degree angle to now a 45. So in order to fix that, you simply just go back into your pliers and you wanna go as far down as you can with it. And then you simply just toggle it right back into that 90 degree angle position as such. Very simple. At this point, I'm actually going to open this up just by lifting that plier with my plier, that little stem right up. And at this point, I can slide in my key pretty easily, just like that. And that will basically attach my component to my bead. Um, and this would work for anything, of course, not just this key, but you know, many other beads and or links that you might have. So at this point, I'm going to grab both sides of the loop with my pliers and you can tell that you've got a pretty good grasp if your tail is parallel with your plier and if your stem sticks out at a 90 degree angle as such. Now what you can do is either you can use your fingers if you've got very nimble fingers. Um, I think for me I prefer my pliers and I'm just going to take this wire and rotate it around the stem and give myself a couple coils here. This is quite easy to do with the 22 gauge wire. As the wire becomes thicker, it does become a little bit more challenging. So just something to keep in mind. I like working with the 22 gauge personally. It has a lot of versatility. So I just clipped off the end. You might have a little bit there sticking out, which it happens, of course. So I'm just gonna grab my chain nose pliers and I'm just going to fold it in to the best of my ability, just like that very easily. So at this point, I can string on my bead and I can now create um, another wire wrap loop, which basically works the same way, except you're not gonna trim it ahead of time. We're gonna do something a little different. So I'm gonna grab the tip of my, with the tip of my plier. Um, and the further you go down into your plier, the more coiling you have to do because you're adding a lot of space there. So typically I like to just be at the tip of my plier there. And I'm just gonna fold straight down. Whoops, a little bit too much there. <laughs> you just wanna be fairly parallel on the same plane as your pliers there, as you can see. And this just creates a nice little 90 degree angle bend in your wire. And at this point, what I do is I'm just gonna grab it because now I don't need to make a large loop because I'm not having to connect a larger component. So I can uh, kind of position my pliers to be at the same spot that my other simple loops are. And I'm just gonna form my wire around and I don't need to bend it backwards because I've already done that in the beginning step of this. So it looks like this, and it also centralizes my little loop there. And now I can grasp it with my chain nose pliers and begin to coil. 
you should be able to get a couple coils, um, at least. And then if you've got extra space, just keep coiling. Okay, that looks really good. And I'm just going to trim it. Okay, and I'm going to now fold that little end piece there in. And it might not be perfect, and that's okay. Um, as long as it's not poking out and hurting anybody. That's all really we want. So I want to make sure that my loops are facing the same direction. So I'm just going to kind of gently bend all of this to make sure that, that loops, those loops lay flat as such. And now I can connect that to my chain here. I forgot to also mention, you can make this chain as long or as short as you want. You don't have to have six. You can have three, you can have four, or you can have six, or you can have 12. It just is up to what your preference is. It's very customized um, for you. So I'm going to do the same exact wire wrapping on this other bead here. And I'm just going to grab a little bit more wire from my stash. And I'm going to go a little faster this time. Okay. And I'm making a bigger loop on this end because I want to be able to slide it down into my, um, my pearlesque chain. And so I want to make sure that I have just enough of a size of diameter there to accommodate for the chain size, which is roughly about four, three or four millimeters should be plenty enough. Okay, and you can always test it too. I probably should have done that before I closed it, but it looks like it's just dead on. So we'll close that up. like it's wanting to flip on me, but should be easy to get. Okay. And now you can slide on your bead and then do the same thing on the other side there. So remember, we're going to take our plier, butt it up against the bead, do a 90 degree angle. And then we'll just work our wire around. You may have to lift off of your pliers and insert it back in. You definitely don't want to add any extra um, space inside of your loop if you can avoid it. So make sure that you're really into your pliers whenever you create your loop there. And then you just simply coil it around. Make sure that the loops are facing the same direction. So you can do that right there and then. And then you can simply cut it as such. And then don't forget to also make sure that that little end isn't sticking out. So that looks really good. And I'm ready to connect that there at the top. So what I'm going to teach you next is how to do a self-made little head pin that's knotted at the end. And if you have head pins at home and prefer to use those, you can absolutely do that to construct this necklace. And if you don't and prefer to just use the wire that's in your kit or your stash, then you can absolutely do that too. Oh, I need to make an extra little component here real quick using my simple loop method. So I'm just going to do that real quick while we're here before we move on to the next stage of our construction. When you get comfortable doing this, you can absolutely just do all of the steps on the one plier. Um, for the beginner level folks here, I would prefer um, teaching you the correct way to do it and then have you master it. And then you can start to really break some of those rules for, um, for beading. So one thing I wanted to note here is if you have extra space and you're wanting to tighten it up, you really just cut away that loop um, as much space as you have there. So if I've got like a couple millimeters of space, I'm just going to cut 
a couple millimeters of my loop away and reform it before I break that neck. So there we go. Then you just go into your pliers and then you twist it back. If you've got a little bit sticking, or if that seam isn't quite closed as it's there, then you can simply just reposition it as such. So I'm going to just make sure that my loops again are facing the same direction and boom, those are done. So go ahead and have both of those rondelles as well in simple loops and then we're gonna connect all those together. So the next stage is to learn how to make these little knotted pins and attach your little um, flower petals there to it. So what we're gonna do is grab a bead and I'm gonna grab some wider. You really just need a little bit to do this. So roughly about two and a half to three inches should be plenty enough. Okay, what you do is you on one end, you grasp it at the tip, just like we were making our simple loop. And I'm going to just twist it around, but this time I'm going to twist it twice instead of just once so that you have a series of two coils. Okay, and it is off to one side there as you can see it. Then what I like to do is take the end of my wire and I'm going to go through the loop that I just created. Okay, it's not gonna fit perfectly, but what you do is you just grab it with your chain nose pliers, whoops. And I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna grab it with my left and I'm gonna use a pair, another pair of pliers it could be another pair of chain nose. It could be your nylon jaw pliers. In this case, I have my um, pliers, my flat nose that have been dipped in a product called Tool Magic. Um, and Tool Magic is a rubberized material that if you dip it, you dip your pliers into it, let it dry 24 hours. It creates this nice rubberized coating that you can use and it will prevent scratching of your um, findings, of your wire, of any components that are metal that you're using. So what I did then is I just slid it down through um, until the very end and it creates this really cool little floral knot at the end and it'll catch any bead that drops down into it. That way you kind of have an instant um, little head pin there made out of just the wire. And if you want to squish it down more, you can. Um, and I will say this is one of those things that the thicker the wire, the harder it does become to make this little knotted head pin component, but thin wire, like the 22 gauge, seems to do pretty well. Okay, then the same basic steps here. You just slide your bead down, and then I'm going to create a larger simple loop this time. So I'm going to actually give myself more than a half inch, um, either three quarters to a full inch. Okay, and I'm going to go deeper into my pliers there, past the halfway point, because as you can see, I've got, I've got to be able to slip this um, flower petal, or in this case, I guess a maple leaf down into uh, my simple loop there. So I want to make a pretty good size simple loop. Okay, again, I've overcompensated, but that's okay. I'm going to cut away my loop the same amount that I need to be able to fold it down into there, that little gap. Okay, once it touches, you know you've got a pretty good loop there. And I'm gonna just take my simple, oh, excuse me, my chain nose pliers, and I'm going to break that neck. And then if I need to adjust, just drop it back down into your round nose pliers and take it from there. So that's what that looks like. And you'll repeat this one, two, three, four times, four more times, and um, attach your flower petals to it. So you can really pick out whatever beads you want for this step. It doesn't really matter. I just picked out the maple leaves with the purple drops because um, they kind of matched. And then you simply open up your simple loop and you can drop your flower component into it. There we go. And then simply just close it back once you've positioned it and attached it together as such. So there we go. That is the basis of my component. So now we kind of just have to stick everything together. And to do this, 
I'm actually going to attach my little red rondelles to my flower components there. Okay, same thing here. And you can position all of these components on your chain however you want to. There is no rule to having to, you know, attach any of this together. So what I do is I just kind of lay it down on my table and see what feels right on in my eyes. So I kind of want to draw the eye up here and then draw the eye down toward the key. So I'm going to leave the key area a little bit more plain because it takes up quite a bit of visual um, space there. And then you can simply start to just attach stuff to your chain. So it looks like this wants to hit over here. So what I would do is I would just grab the chain and reattach your component to that or reattach, I guess, another component to that Oops. as such. Okay, so far so good. So I'll probably go up a step or in this case, I guess a beat or two up and then um, pick a spot. So maybe like right here. Lift up and then connect and then press back down. Again, making sure that that seam is nice and closed and then kind of just repeat this step over and over again, whoops. So let's see, maybe about right here. And then I'll go in with another pedal. Close it up. And then maybe I'll go right here. Open it up. We'll stick this red one on. So I'm just alternating my colors. And uh, again, you can do this however you wish. Let's see. I'm missing one about right here. So let's do it right here. And if I feel later that I want to balance out the colors a little bit more, I can always reposition them later. Not a big deal. Perfect. So there we go. That is the main component to our necklace here. Isn't that just beautiful? It's so, it makes this beautiful little jingle noise as you're wearing it too. And uh, I think it just adds to the fun. So now we just got to make our necklace. So what I'm going to do is grab my chain and I want to do a shorter length necklace. That way I've got some uh, rope here and then it kind of comes into this Y style down the, my chest. And so I'm just going to cut this a little bit shorter um, in length here. So probably two feet should be plenty enough. So I'm just going to grab my pliers and I'm going to trim that right off. And I've got plenty of chain left if I want to make a bracelet later on. And I'm going to make, well, I'm going to string this through and I'm going to make a little bail here at the end. It's a little handmade makeshift bail, my favorite kind, right? So we'll just make ourselves a little loop here and we're going to wire wrap it. So I'm just going to grab a little bit more wire, probably a few inches, maybe four inches or so. The more wire you have, the messier and bigger your bail wire wrapping gets and looks and it could be kind of cool I think and I'm just going to slide it right through my chain there okay and I'm going to just hold part of that wire down and then use the rest of the wire to wrap it around and around and it doesn't have to be perfect that's I think probably one of the best parts about this is it gives that nice illusion of a slider but it's keeping everything nice and stable and yeah, don't forget to put your your centerpiece on before <laughs> before making this because you've made a wire wrap loop. So it would be pretty difficult to go back and um, reopen that up and you know reattach it that way. So I recommend getting it right in the beginning. Okay, and I'm going to use up all of my wire to create that nice little messy wrapped loop there. You can use up the rest of the wire that you have at your spool of the three feet that you get in the kit, or you could just use this little piece here, whatever your preference is, no big deal. Okay, that looks really fun and cool. And I'm going to now just wrap up the ends and attach my clasp. So I'll simply just stick the end of my chain into the finding and grab my 
pliers that have that coating on it. And I'm just going to press and crimp that right down very easy. And at this point, I can attach one side of my clasp. Just like that. And I'm going to do the same thing to this, this other side. Perfect. Here we go. And voila. You have yourself a garden key necklace from Alice in Wonderland using the same fun beautiful tones of purples and reds and really giving that fun floral feel for the springtime. There we go. That's it. How cool does that look? <laughs> All right, let me flash the finished photo for you. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I did teaching it to you guys. Again, you can grab this kit if you want to from silversilkonline.com and don't forget to subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel and you can follow me on Instagram as well. And the last place you can check us out, which I didn't mention earlier, is our Facebook Silkies group. We are over 2,000 members now and growing steadily into this beautiful, very vibrant and creative community and we want to welcome you there as well. You can lastly sign up for text notifications, which is in the description for this video. I hope you'll join me in my next tutorial, and I wish you guys fun, creative vibes um, from Silver Silk and more, and I'll see you again next time. Bye! <laughs>